I want to take questions from the viewers, but I have one more thing on this. I like the concept of compliance. Yes. Because usually compliance, it's external, external with a with a regulatory body or here you're talking about your own internal compliance. What does that broadly look like? What are metrics you look at uh, in order, and how do you enforce this? Yeah, so, so we have two types of compliances. We have what we call quantitative system compliance and qualitative. Qualitative is what is, is people on the ground that check whether we're complying or not. And that's what we call Talabat patrol. You might have seen, uh, you might have seen it on LinkedIn. So Talabat patrol are Talabat dressed officers that roam the streets, make sure our drivers comply to the standards of Talabat. This is more of the- You know how on TV shows you have the cops and then you have the, I forgot what they're yeah, called, yeah. the internal, internal cops that check that, that them. They're our special yeah. agents, yeah. They're yeah, there to support yeah. riders and make sure that if there's any problems, they solve, that's one. But from, from, from a system, we monitor multiple things. One, we monitor rider compliance. So what does it mean? Does the rider, the rider log into his shift on time? Does the rider accept the order on time? Does the rider, once he accepts the order, does he drive automatically to the uh, to the vendor or not? And these are all automated. So I'll give you an example. If I was a rider, I accepted an order for you, Amen, and I didn't move. Within one minute, I start to get robocalls telling me, Wasim, you accepted an order. Why haven't you moved yet? Move. So it's so granular. We control every single step. Rider arrives at the restaurant location, but doesn't confirm pick up the order. Robocalls start kicking in. You're at the location, orders, restaurant said order is ready, you've not picked it up, why? So we monitor every single thing. Most important thing is, is rider compliance, vendor compliance, that they prepare it on time. And third is our overall average delivery time. We don't look at it just as a number, we look at it as a percent time. So 75% of our orders were they delivered in less than 20 minutes or not. Because when we say 20 minutes, it doesn't mean every single order. So we have a threshold that says, we need to deliver in sub 20 minutes, 75% of, of the time. So we monitor the granularity of the data, single point by point, and it's all system driven. So there's not human intervention. We have teams that analyze this data, identify where are the gaps. And the gap might be as small as restaurant owner between two and three, you have a surge in orders, your prep time went up by five minutes. You need to add a chef or you need to add- You're doing them a big favor. You know, we, there's no way they can get this data on their own. They don't know how to no, start no. or where to start. I talked to them, they only focus about their sauces and things like this. I want to take questions yeah. from, uh, 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 I have questions from Netra and Andreas, and thank you, Sam, for your comments. So Netra uh, 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 has a question about, how is Talabat managing customers who are not answering when the drivers are for delivery? So the drivers are for delivery and they're trying to reach the customer and they're not. Yeah. And how do you memorize uh, such, such a situation? And he did have a follow-up on it that, especially that uh, some orders is cash and delivery as well. So that what was his, his follow-up on that? Correct. So, so we incentivize customers to pay online because we believe it's the safest way, especially post, uh, post COVID. So what happens is when a driver reaches the customer doorstep, so the app actually starts to send notification to a customer, your order is ready, the driver left, the driver is close to your doorstep. So we try to keep the, the customer as much informed about the status. But if the case happens, what happens is the rider reaches back to our dispatch team that I'm in location X and the driver is not picking up. That's when our call center takes over and tries to contact the, the, the customer with different numbers because what is prevailing to the driver is the last number that the customer actually had. So what we do, our customer's uh, care starts to contact. Second, we've enabled lately chat. So a rider can now chat with a customer and a customer can chat with the rider. So it makes it easier to communicate. So we're solving it two ways, enabling rider customer chatting, two, so that's one B, that's all in app, enabling notification to a customer once the order is closed. If this all fails, that's when our customer care agents interfere. Now, if it happens once or twice by a customer, something happened, you couldn't pick up the order, it's fine. But if this happens frequently with the same customer, we identify that as a fraud customer. And then that customer account gets blocked because it's then bad intentions. A service, a competing service trying to test you, test you. Correct. And, and we have a fraud system that actually detects these. And it's not only based on numbers; it's based on number, IP of of, of the of where you're placing those. So it's, it's, it's an algorithm that really tries to predict: is this a fraud order or not? Okay. Okay. Uh, Natra, thanks you. Very good question. We have another question. Was seen from uh, uh, Andreas. Uh, so Andreas is asking: How do you nudge customers? To order from restaurants is, is this something that you look at uh, so if you have uh, mm -hmm. restaurants that, that perform better right so you have compliance matrix uh, uh, compliance matrix and they perform better than others 
so Andreas is asking, uh, uh, so Dr. Andreas in this case, do you nudge, do you try to nudge uh, uh, customers for this, uh, 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 for a better overall experience, right? So it's not a commercial decision as much as no. it's an execution uh, uh, right, decision. Right. So, so our app has a certain ranking algorithm that it works. So we have thousands of restaurants. So how do we show restaurant A on top of restaurant B? It's not haphazard and it's system driven and it's done by customer centric KPIs. So one of them is cancellation. Restaurants that cancel less. So, so it's, it takes around, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven different parameters, comes up with a score and ranks the restaurant with the one with the best service to the least service. So it's not only speed, it ranks based on speed and reliability. As I said, restaurants that cancel orders all the time will get pushed down. Restaurants that don't prep their order on time for me to deliver it as per the promised time gets pushed. I'll give an example. So it's better for us for a restaurant to say, look, I can deliver in 45 minutes and deliver actually in 45 minutes versus saying I'll deliver in 30 and deliver in 45. So we look at these compliance KPIs and the system starts to rank these vendors based on the most compliant to the least compliant. And all of these KPIs are customer centric KPIs like cancellation, prep time, uh, the rating, what did customer actually rate his customer experience on the app, et cetera. Uh, thank you, Asim. Thank you, Dr. Andreas, for a very good question. If you have any other questions, please put them in the comments. We'll, we'll get to them uh, with Wasim. Um, Wasim, let's talk about groceries because that's your own that's your, that's your own uh, 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 location, right? So your own warehousing and so on. So I'm trying to reduce the complexities here because a bunch of things. What's a typical flow? So let's say you're, you're targeting a less than 20 minutes within the UAE and 15 minutes in, in other countries. What happens is, so as soon as I'm home, uh, my kids say we're running out of water and I, and I order, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some water and, 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 and cornflakes. And I place order, the payment is deducted, so I'm confirmed customer. What happens then for you to, what are the steps and who runs, basically? Who, who does the running to, to, yeah. to get within the 15 minutes? Yeah, so, so basically uh, what we do is, uh, for our QR commerce in specific, we've ensured transmission time is zero. So the moment you hit an order, it's automatically in our picker hand in a matter of seconds. So our picker knows that he needs to pick an order. And the way we've developed it, we've developed what we call guided picking and our dark stores are built for online fulfillment. So he gets the order sorted in the shortest path pos possible to pick. Our average pick time, even for a hundred euro basket size does not cross the three minutes Threshold. So within three minutes, it's picked. And these are not conventional yes, stores. Minutes, I'm, 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 when I'm in shop and I'm getting stuff, I'm in the lane. I need, I need to teach more than three minutes. Uh, are they <laughs> no, what are they doing? <laughs> Retailers try to get you to spend time. So you see more, you pick more. Us, it's based purely on efficiency. And if you go into the warehouse, it's so tight, narrow aisles, uh, and it's, it's, it's built. So the whole layout is actually built on science. So we actually calculate what's the shortest distance, similar to how Google Map, when you're gonna go from a location tells you, no, this is the shortest yeah, path, yeah. it's built like that. So orders actually picked on average in three minutes because uh, Q-commerce stores are, not, are built what you call in hotspots. So they're built closer to the customers. They're built where we have the highest density of riders. So the rider usually arrives in a matter of six to seven, five to six minutes. And then we have a driving distance of 12 minutes. So. The trick is how can we pick very fast? How can we ensure the rider arrives to the location as fast as possible? And one of the biggest problems we started to face now, Amen, is actually the time it takes us to give the order to the driver. Why? Because when you do thousands of orders from one location, then the dispatch time of actually finding it and giving it to the customer, to the driver, sorry, is critical. And that's what we're optimizing now. And that's where we see we can shave some minutes to go from the 20 to the 15, plus uh, we're looking to double our stores in, in, in UAE by this, by this, by before end of the year to make sure we build more closer fulfillment centers closer to our customers. Thank you, Asim. Uh, one thing on this as well, I've noticed that when I order a lot of water, like four, uh, four boxes of water, I get two drivers, and then I noticed that probably because I'm making this a big order, physically it's it's not practical. I've I've auto adjusted where I you know I order less boxes because I feel it's it. So what happens in this case? How, how do you uh, uh, divide them by two to say, look, these are too much. These are too much for one driver to carry. Right. 
so, so the way it works is that we have volumetric data in the system. So when you place an order, we know that it's volume of X. The moment where you get more than one rider is when there's no cars available. So the system automatically, so that we deliver on time, the system says, you know what, I'm not going to deliver it in one, in, in one car after 20 minutes because that's when it's free. I'm going to split the order among multiple riders so that you can still get it. Now, the, the shortfall of this, it's causing a bit of customer, uh, I would say, dissatisfaction because you get your door ringed more than once because the drivers come after each other. Uh, and this is not much. I think around 6% of our orders now get, get, get split. Most of the time, it's allocated to a car and a car and a car delivers. But that's one of the optimizations. And the reason why we split it also, Ayman, is for driver well-being. These are heavy things. So we don't want a, a, a driver carrying 20 bottles up. So we try to split to make sure that uh, what the driver is carrying is manageable. And that's part of our initiative to make sure that drivers don't get disincentivized to deliver a grocery order. What I'm thinking, uh, Wasim, is the uh, the business owners, right? Because I have discussions with them. They tell me, hey, man, there are fees. I don't want to pay them and things like this. But I listen to you now about all of the complexities and the details, which they can never, they can, uh, it's not the core business. They won't execute on this. They won't, they might optimize a little bit, but not so much. What would you think would be a rational discussion to have with the business owner? Uh, saying yeah. that how this is how this is done and calculated and, and the commission structure they're paying versus them doing this uh, themselves right. because my angle always with them is look at the marketplace as an executional arm and a customer arm right you're not paying instagram and facebook and google acquisition costs they have their customer base and so on so what's what's the angle there right. that you'd recommend for business owners correct so so, so i meant prior, prior to me being a commerce i was the md of kuwait so i've had thousands of discussions with vendors when we say you know what we're charging x commission they say wow it's high that's not that that's that's you're sharing profits with me you're not taking commission so i tell you what is the best way to do it so partners are not fully sometimes aware of the components of their pnl what do i mean like that so if you do what you call off the envelope calculation and i've done this a thousand times and i am more than open if anyone wants to challenge me on that to share the numbers if you come and say, if they come and take their logistics cost, the number of drivers that they have, and they calculate that as a percentage of their basket size, I've not seen any, any, any uh, restaurant chain that the logistics cost is less than 16%. That's just purely logistics cost. So if you take the number of drivers, the cars that you have, if you look at how many orders they deliver per hour, if you deliver that overall over the cost, you get the cost per delivery. If you del if you divide that cost of delivery over your basket size, it's not less than 16, 17%. But, but they don't see it. They see it as a line in a PNL, as a value, not as a percentage, because it is a fixed cost. Then you have the marketing cost. When you join a platform like Talabat, you get access immediately to hundreds of thousands of online customers. So, and Talabat promotes your, your brand. So you're getting access to that. You're getting access to the technology, the system that I'm telling you to do. So we've done calculations where the cost has, if you want to do it as a percentage, minimum is between 35 to 45% of that basket size. Whereas Talabat charges a fraction of that compared to what it is. So. What I would advise restaurant owners is break down the component of Talabat commission. It's, it's a marketplace commission for you to be on the app. It's the last mile delivery part. It's the marketing part. So all of this is broken down. You then calculate the equivalence of this on your own uh, platform. How much do you spend an acquisition? One of our biggest cost lines is acquisition. How do we keep acquiring new customers and retaining them? Majority of, of restaurant owners and retailers don't calculate that. If you break down these components, then sum them up and compare them to Talabat Commission, you will know that Talabat Commission is nothing compared to how much you would pay, not to mention the risk. This is a variable cost versus you, are in, you, are, you have a fixed cost. So, for example, we don't give you orders, we don't take commission. Every order we take a percentage of, so it's a variable cost. And the more orders you do, then uh, the, the overall picture makes more sense because then you start to build even your operation cost becomes cheaper because then you don't focus only on dine in uh, uh, type of modules. You've set up your kitchen for better delivery, faster delivery, which 
is a bit of a less operating cost than how can you call a dining service. So the remaining some, item though is the uh, customer information, right? So technically, it's still Talabat's customer. So that that I feel is the weak link in, in the approach. Correct, correct, and we comply with uh, with, with with Europe uh, 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 customer data protection. So we don't. We there's some we, we share data in terms of flow of orders. Where are they coming from? So we share a lot of analytics with the customers, but, but not. Customer personal information. Yeah. Customer personal information is there. So, in summary, I mean, break down their PNL into different components of what Talabat Commission is, and do the comparison. And I'm willing to bet on it that it's always cheaper with not only Talabat. It's always cheaper with an aggregator because all of the aggregators charge mainly the same, the same, the same range. But Talabat, because it's a leader in all of the market, gives you more value for money because you target a much bigger customer base. My recommendation to them is always a combination of the two, right? So uh, a marketplace can give you a lot of inf a lot of information, customers, and so on. And you have, I look at it, whatever existing infrastructure they have, and from that I can see what they can do on a certain scale with their own CRM and WhatsApp and so on. But that's a different that's, that's a different model. I have more things from my side. I'm going to put those on the side. Uh, uh, there's our mutual friend Ayman Salim. He's asking about what if the most of the customers are close to the restaurant, and he's saying that groceries are something that you've been focusing on for a long time. So I think what he meant, uh, what if most of the customers are close to the restaurant? Uh, in this case, I think he means uh, if if many of the orders are from a close proximity to a certain restaurant, what type of what type of execution there? And yeah. we all yes, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so now, definitely, as I said, time from the time from the cust the restaurant to the customer plays a very important role. It's around ten to twelve minutes on average. So that um, sorry, Max. So the closer the the customer is to the restaurant, the faster it is. But there's always the prep time factor. So I've received complaints from friends that look, we see the restaurant is five minutes away. Why does it take twenty minutes for me to arrive? And that's normal because that's defined by the prep time. The driver only arrives. So that restaurant says, "I prepped the order in fifteen minutes." Even if it's one minute away, the driver will not reach before before, before that time. We always encourage customers to order from closer restaurants because it's better for the customer it's better for us so why is it better for the customer you get it faster why is it better for us because the turnaround time or what we call the driver utilization is higher it means that the driver can deliver multiple orders within an hour as opposed to less orders so that's why it's good for us it's good for us and that's why i mean initially i covered what we call choice inventory it's it's that's why talabat has thousands of restaurants because we want to make sure in every area you're in, you have a choice to order from every single cuisine, so that if you want speed, there is a close by restaurant that can deliver. The last question we have is from Amina Tala. She's asking about Talabat Mart. And so today, Talabat Mart is on the B2C side. So she's looking at uh, uh, does Talabat have long term plans of uh, connecting them with wholesalers? So, which is different, it's a totally different uh, business model. Already some. Most uh, most of them have their own direct relationships, but here she's asking if there's room for a business there and what are Talabat's plans. Or do you get such requests or inquiries from uh, from suppliers? Uh, correct. So so you can say that we're well positioned because we have we have the restaurant owners on one side, we have the CPG relationship with the the vendors or the retailers on the other side. We can do the link. So we are experimenting uh, in Qatar market. Uh, such a uh, such a service, but it's still what you call within an MVP. All right, all right, all right. Uh, thank you, Matala, for that question. 